Carlisle, homicide. This neighbor, special victims, my partner, Benson. Who's the brass? Poncho, one police plaza. Said he wants the perp arrested yesterday. Well, she talked to H.G. Wells. <laughs> Why the pressure? The Vic was an ADA. Named Karen Fitzgerald. Found dead in the bushes late this afternoon. Raped, shot in the head. I know, I know her. I know her. She's, um, she's my age. We had drinks together a few times after court. It's all yours. CSU can tell you what they got so far. I just got off the phone with a mayor's aide. He wants a suspect in this Fitzgerald rape homicide ASAP. So where are we with this? She'd been an ADA for two years. 100 percent of She took on every case that was thrown at her. Didn't care if it lowered her win-lose average. You knew her. We were acquaintances. I wish we'd been friends. She kept her head down and tried to put the bad guys in jail. Which meant a lot of them walked. Most of them didn't, but we're still talking about a dump truck full of perps. People with a grudge. Anything at the crime scene to indicate that she might have known the killer? A hell of a lot of anger. The guy beat her with a rock, raped her, and then took the time out of his busy schedule to shoot her twice. Anybody remember the Labor Day rapist? Raped someone on Labor Day? There were probably 10 rapes on Labor Day, John. But the papers picked up on this one, put their collectively creative heads together, and came up with that moniker for the doer. Anyway, it went down to the ramble just like this one. No homicide, but a beating, same time of day, still open. So you're saying the same perp, then? I've only been partners a few months, but the man's already starting to think like me, only slower. Jeffries, Briscoe, break out the Labor Day file, see what was missed. I'd like to grab someone from forensics, rewalk the crime scene with Benson, you know, get a feel for what went down. You got it. Munch, Cassidy, draw parallels between Labor Day and yesterday, then see if we got a rape that fell between the two with the same M.O. We're assuming she was grabbed and then hustled into the bushes over here. What are the round casts? Knees. See the handprints in front of them? Herp made her crawl? We've got uh, no handprints in front of these knees. What do you make of that? She was begging. Begging not to be raped or for her life? Both. So the perp picked up a rock. We've got that at the lab with her blood on it. Broker knows she was gushing blood. We found it on her clothes, on the ground here. Also found a condom wrapper. So she's crawling away with a broken nose, raped, begging for her life. And the guy shoots her twice. Oh, we got spent rounds from a 44. Uh, one went into her left eye, lodged into the ground here. The other one took off part of her head and then ricocheted up there. Did you find a book? No, why? Her secretary said she'd like to come to the Ramble to read on her lunch hour, because it's so safe and serene. No book. What if she was dragged from this side? I need gloves. A burnt out case. Murder mystery. I guess we screwed up. No, you didn't. OK, so let's just say that she was dragged from this side. It means she was grabbed from this side. Probably off that bench. Hey, hey, I'm losing the warbling vario, lady. Benson, police department, we'd like to ask you some questions. The guy almost pushes me off the bench. What time was that? I don't know, 3.34. I just spotted an Easternwood TV. Okay, did he say anything? No. Did you? I'm not comfortable talking to people. That's why I watch birds. I like being alone. OK. What do you, what's this? There are 20,000 known sex offenders on our computer. I've narrowed it down from the description you gave. So holler if you see anything, OK? I'd be better at this if these guys had feathers. Use your binoculars. That's him, upper left-hand corner. Off the first six, are you sure? Pretty sure. No. Nah. Yeah. OK, I'm going to print him out, and why don't we take a look at a few more, all right? No, none of those guys. Wait, wait, wait. No. Any of these? That's him, lower right-hand corner. So the first guy isn't the guy? Well, they both look like the guy. Look, if I'm not doing this right, you can get someone else. You're our witness. We need you. Could I have a Coke or something? A Pepsi? Sprite. Give me a Pepsi. 10 IDs. Birdman ID 10 people. Larry Bird and the Partridge family. Hey. What's this? I had the prosecutor's office cross-reference the bird watcher's IDs with all of Fitzgerald's cases. They made two hits. One of the first, Kenneth Maggio. He was convicted of forcible sodomy. Did time in Elmira. He's out on parole. We're going to bang at Mr. Richard White, who's another Fitzgerald case. Where does he land on the atrocity bell curve? Date rape, cop to plea, did no time. He's a realtor. I was shocked to read about it in the paper. Why? Nobody deserves to die that way. I actually felt for the woman. 
Felt what? Happy that the woman who prosecuted you on a date rape charge wouldn't have the occasion to prosecute you in the future? Those charges were reduced to sexual assault. I pled guilty on my lawyer's advice. A lot of gray area in a he said, she said, he said. I was innocent. Oh, so you were railroaded. And her death made you feel some kind of angst? I uh, tend to take an objective view of things. Fitzgerald was doing her job. She was wrong. I had no hard feelings. She was doing what she was hired to do. I forgive her. Do you forgive Louise Billings, too? Hmm? The person who accused you of the date rape. Louise was confused. She didn't know how the world worked. Oh, please enlighten us. She had invited me to dinner a month after we broke it off. One thing led to another, and uh, we had sex. Uh, Louise thought it meant more than it did. She got angry and filed charges. It sounds like everyone involved was wrong but you. It happens. Where were you yesterday between the hours of 3 and 5 p.m.? Astoria. I was previewing a house. Your story for yesterday, can you confirm that? Yes, uh, I was only a realtor out at the property. I had to use the lockbox to get in. That information is faxed to the listing agent. Uh, who would be, um... Crim Properties in Jamaica. Can anyone else corroborate your alibi? Yes, uh, my business partner, Kimberly Phillips. She knows where I was. So does anybody look good for Labor Day? Yeah. Cassidy helped forensics nail a guy named Jean Dussault who was deported to Canada, only Canada can't find him, so they got the dog sleds out looking for him now. Well, keep on him, because Dussault's Labor Day MO is very similar to the Fitzgerald rape, okay? Now, your guy, uh, what's his name? Richard White. Yeah, him. Uh, where does he sit now? Well, his alibi looks good for Fitzgerald, but I went through the White trial transcript. Fitzgerald lets him plead down midway through the trial, but not before just dragging his ass through the mud. He had to have hated her. All right. John, I want you to talk to the uh, date rape victim, um, Louise Billings. And Jeffrey's got a hold of Fitzgerald's best friend and attorney. Uh, Joan Simon. She's coming in this afternoon. All right. Well, you should get some background there, too. Let's get him. Richard could be a really sweet man, but sometimes he'd get abusive. He'd push me around, make me do things sexually that I really didn't want to do. Like Mr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. I started losing weight from the tension. I couldn't sleep. Broke it off after three years. How did he react to that? He was calm. He said he understood. And how did he react to that? I kept on bumping into him. We'd make a little small talk, and then he'd move on. It was more like talking to an old friend rather than a lover. How often did you run into him? I don't know. Two, three times a month. Didn't you think all these meetings were odd in a city this size? You accidentally cross paths how often? My shrink says it was a classic case of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> so, we ran into each other again. Well, Richard was in a particularly charming mood. I invited him up to my place for dinner, for old time's sake. He got drunk, and then I was looking at Mr. Hyde. He grabbed me and threw me down. And he told me to crawl to him and beg for forgiveness. And I did. 